friend to death, we should say that you could hear from outside the door that she, she, he was knocking her around. It was more than that, Phil. He was threatening her life. And it wasn't the there first was, episode of this? No, and there was no doubt in my mind that he was serious. This man's voice in anger was so chilling. Was he threatening to do it herself or to hire someone? Both. He said, when a man works with his hands, I will cut off his hands. You work with your face, and I will destroy your face. And if I can't do it, I have friends who will, and your mother and your kid are next. Your mother, uh, you are, uh, you tell us, uh, she was the sweater girl. She hated that. Yes, she did. <laughs> but boy, oh boy, was she was on everybody's, every marine locker had a picture <laughs> of, uh, show, I want you to see uh, Miss Turner as she appeared on the Donahue show not long ago. Still a very beautiful woman. And incidentally, the relationship between her and her daughter is healthy. Yes. Amicable. Great mutually friend. satisfying. Here's uh, Lana Turner on the Donahue Show about five, six years ago. I got so sick of the word sex symbol yeah. that it, subconsciously it was a turn off. Yeah. Yeah. Now, sensuous, that I am. I am a sensual woman. And there's a great difference between a sexy, hotsy totsy and a deeply sensual woman. Yeah. That I am now celibate is my own choice. <laughs> <laughs> This is a classy woman Thank who it clearly always wanted to be and always strove to be classy. But in the process of her stardom, an awful lot of men came into her life. My mother was a romantic. You know, she fell in love totally. Today, she would have lived with these men and not married them and had she all... She has said that, yes. She wished she grew up in today's world rather than the 30s and 40s where if you were even dating someone, you better marry them fast before, you know, got in the news. Uh-huh. Uh, so now you see, uh, uh, I don't know how you rallied from this. I mean, stabbing. To this day, it, 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 there's even a sense I, I feel, Cheryl, you feel even today a, a need to sort of defend your, your behavior that night. Well, it's not something that one just closes a door on, you know. When, when one is sure responsible is. for someone's life ending, whether it's a justifiable act or not, uh, it stays with you. You have to learn to cope with it. You have to learn to accept it for what it was, and that took me many years to do that. Uh, hence the title detour. I went off on a strange path for a what while. Was, uh, what were some of the strange paths you took? Well, I became terribly rebellious, which m a lot of teenagers do, but mine was more a series of self-punishment because no one ever told me. I, we never discussed what had happened. And so I had no idea what my own parents thought of me, much less what the world thought of me. So naturally, as most children do, they think the worst of themselves, and I, I did that. Yeah. What were some of the, what kind of destructive behaviors did you? Oh, well, fast cars, sneaking out late at night. Uh, I became a hot potato. They didn't know quite what to do with me, so they put me in a reformatory, and then that didn't work, so they put me in a mental hospital. And yeah. Were you raped and sexually abused by Lex Barker, the uh, Johnny Weissmuller Tarzan replacement? Yes. Who was, who was married to your mother? Yes, that's correct. At the pool? Well, it started there, yes, when I was ten and a half. And how long did this uh, go on? Almost three years. So we have a legacy here. I mean, how much therapy have you been in? I've been in no therapy. You've done this all by yourself? Yes. When did you finally... I think the first thing that happened that set me back on the road, the right road again, was when my father, uh, who was so proud of his business, the restaurant business, gave me a very highly visible job in the front door of a very famous restaurant, the Luau in Beverly Hills. Your father, Stephen Crane, the yes. restaurateur, yes. And I worked with him for 15 years, and that was the first time anything happened to me that I felt good about myself. And that was a good start. You started, uh-huh. Uh uh, you're now a very wealthy woman. You are very well invested, I am told, in uh, real estate in Hawaii. Yes. Shouldn't we all have some real <laughs> estate in Hawaii? <laughs> Um, and you're also very, very uh, uh, out front. Uh, you are more than out of the closet. <laughs> uh, you have a 20-year lesbian relationship. Almost. Uh, 19. Uh, with with a, a woman with whom you've been faithful now for almost two decades. That's right. And you're now happily living in San Francisco, and you're, I assume, and you're, you don't drink, do you? Or do you well, I 
I enjoy Once in a while, cocktail, what? yes. But al <laughs> all right, alcohol's never been a problem for you. No. It wasn't one of the roads you went Fortunately, down. Fortunately, no. That, well, uh, yes, as a teenager, I did. But again, this was escaping. This right. was... Uh, what, what is the moral of this story, uh, Cheryl? Uh, you were certainly a candidate for turning up dead somewhere. Yes. You had to be. I think a lot of people were very surprised that I survived. But to me, the most important thing that I've learned is how important communication is and that it's never too late to talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. And by that, I mean my mother. Uh, she and I are great friends because we finally talked about all the things we'd never talked about. When did you do that? Was it last Thanksgiving? Uh, no, no, it was a little, a little before that. When I started writing Detour, actually, uh, we finally sat down and talked to each other and we're good friends because of it. Mm -hmm. You're very proud of your mother. Oh, boy, yes. You understand <laughs> what she was going through. Yes. You used to go to the set to watch her make movies. Mm -hmm. You knew what that red light meant. That meant yes, you better be quiet and Stay not open out of that there. door. Or don't open the door. <laughs> or open that door. You could not kiss your mother while she was working because of the makeup problem. Right. And the hair. And you of course, remember? I as a child took that to mean I was never to touch her. You know, it was off limits. Your mother was gone all week long when you were uh, filming. She was a working mother. You know, they, they were unusual before you in got those up? days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You also tell your reader about the agony of having been sent consistently to bed early. Yes. 6.30? Yes. For your beauty rest? Yes. <laughs> Do you see that now as, let's get rid of this? No. You don't? No. You know, it was a different world then. And my mother, for all her faults, and she admits them herself, she did her best. You know, she really tried to do her best. The year is 1958, and... Uh, Cheryl's mother, Lana Turner, is on the stand. I have no idea why this is on film. When we consider the agony of trying to get film from inside a courtroom today, uh, this is 1958. This soundtrack is not the best in the world. But consider this now. I assume you were not in the courtroom for this. No, I was not. You were 14 years old. Lana Turner's lover is dead at the hand of Lana Turner's daughter. And here is Lana explaining to a courtroom what happened. Roll that film. say, after some kind of childhood. Your mother could have no idea about the r truly complicated, emotionally troubling nature of your childhood at the time that all this was happening. Is that so? That's true. In fact, she only found out about many things in reading the book. And um, it was difficult for her. You remember the limousines and the riotous... Yes, and people trying to break through the window to touch us and having my clothes torn, uh, they were reaching up, grabbing at me. It was very frightening. Now, this, this, uh, you have memories of this, do you yes. not? Yes. Christina Crawford. In New York, actually. Yeah. Here? Yeah, That's yeah, in New York. People pounding yeah. on the... Yeah. As a child, you're looking at, uh, looks like a riot outside your car. It, it did. It was outside the 21 Club, and uh, they had to get the police, and uh, the, um, the woman that took care of us got hurt and had to be taken to the hospital, and I was absolutely terrified. I had a hold of my little brother's hand. He was about four. And uh, the two of us just held on to each other, and this sea of humanity almost uh, stampeded us. It was a very, very frightening uh, experience for uh -huh. a child. 
You had a stroke after you wrote your book. Yes, I did, 1981. Do you have any doubt that this was provoked by the kind of heat you took for what you talked about? I think about? it was probably the, the end result of it, but it had been building for a long time. It was a complete blockage of the left carotid artery. And uh, so that had been damaged when I was a child, unfortunately. Yeah. Yes. You told stories about being... You weren't... You weren't con confined to your crib, were you? Or, uh... No, I wasn't. My brother was. He was uh, tied down to it. But I was forced to watch when he was beaten, and uh, uh, so I, I ended up um, feeling responsible because I was too little. I couldn't help him. I couldn't do anything right. about him. Do you remember having to smile for the cameras and the publicity shots? <laughs> Since the time I was a baby, of course. I was part of the, the entire publicity. Um... And you hated it. Well, it isn't that I hated it, no. It's that I became a managed person, and I didn't... What was real for us was fantasy, and the reality was treated as though it never existed. So, as uh, Cheryl mentioned, there was no communication. And, and so my mother was an alcoholic at the time, and she would go on rampages. But the next morning, it was never discussed. So what I knew to be reality was treated as though it didn't exist. We have you on the Donahue Show. Yes. Eleven years ago. You knew this it's was... It's in my new book, too. I yes. hope so. I read all yes. the books I'm in. Um, uh, Christina, uh, you knew this Mommy Dearest was not your basic... Uh, when I was a kid in Hollywood, this was rough. I mean, this was something new Americans had never seen. Well, I had lived with it all my life. Uh, so it was not anything new to me, but it was the first time we'd ever talked about Publicly. violence when, within the home. So we didn't have a context in which to yes. discuss it. Did you expect the heat you took for it? Nobody did. I couldn't have. I mean, there was no way to. It was the very first time this had ever been uh, discussed. We, we didn't know what was out there waiting for us. You, but, the, but the other side of it is we didn't know how many people were also affected. Millions and millions and millions of people had similar experiences in their homes. This is something. Uh, I mean, a stroke is serious stuff. Yes, it was. Uh, I'm not sure I understand you to, your qu answer. You're saying this may or may not have been related to the stress you felt you took after Mommy Dearest. It was partly that. I, I think see. that was the, the final uh, result of it, but it had been building since I was a kid. Um, yeah. My mother had tried to kill me, and she tried to choke me, and uh, it uh, damaged the artery in my neck, but it took many, many, many years, a lifetime of stress and chaos, to um, yeah. have it uh, yeah. break. What do you understand to have been your mother's problem and I mean that in no derogatory way it had to be here was a woman who smiled on camera who just was elegant and inside she had to be well she was an abused child and I think that's really important to understand that she grew up um, uh, as an abused child she was probably although she never said it specifically from what I can gather, because she was very reluctant to talk about her past, uh, she was probably sexually abused also. She did not let our, um, her mother in our house. Uh, she never had a meal with us. There were no photographs of her. Uh, she, we were not allowed to visit her uh, during the whole time that I grew up. So I grew up in a very dysfunctional uh, atmosphere where there was no normality of any kind. I think my mother was a very insecure, lonely person, you know? Uh -huh. Did you get depressed after all this heat you took? <laughs> that. After Mommy Dearest? <laughs> That's very depressing, yes. Well, but you certainly yes. knew this wasn't good. Did you think you'd get a standing ovation for s saying something about America's sweetheart? I, well, it wasn't America's sweetheart. Let's be serious about that. But, um, well, uh, what was she then? I she... mean, Mildred Pierce was not America's sweetheart. Come on. That's true. Yes. Well, she was America. She was certainly in the she Betty Davis category. Well, that's not America's sweetheart No, it either. isn't. It so, isn't. Um, uh, but it isn't, it isn't so much my understanding of her as my understanding of what happens to human beings when they are put through that. And I think that's where, right. you know, my learning experience right. has come. And that's where I try to, okay. you know, to share. She writes Mommy Dearest, goes on the road, 1978, goes on the Donahue Show. Here's the first call. Watch this, 11 years ago. Is the caller there? Yes, I am. Go right ahead. Well, first of all, I'd like to say that I'm deeply disturbed and unhappy about this book. Millions of people in this country uh, revere Joan Crawford, and uh, this book is, uh, I just don't know what to say about it. 
I would like to know why the book wasn't written before her mother died, first of all. And uh, why did she put the title of the book, Mommy Dearest? There's a great deal of animosity in the title of this book. Why not Mother Dearest? You were a fan of Miss Crawford? Yes, I am. And I'm very upset by well, this. It's can I just, right? may I ask you just a few, couple of questions? Yes. Uh, why should the lie be perpetuated? What do you mean? Well, why should, why should we be deceived she into... Says is the truth. Mrs. Craw Ms. Crawford isn't here no, any longer to deny any of this. Oh, so you don't think it's true? No, I don't. You don't think that her daughter was hit over the head with a can of Bon Ami that, that sprayed all over her? Well, that's a possibility. Mothers do get mad. I mean, her mother could have uh, done something like that once and, and regretted it all her life, you know. Uh, there's a passage in the book wherein uh, Joan... That'll just give you, that's a sense of it. <laughs> but I think what is important to see is that um, today, yeah, right here in New York, there's a trial going on. That wouldn't have happened you talk about uh, the Steinberg years trial. ago. We, d we didn't understand that children have rights yeah. and that there is a continuum. Yeah. And that as, as survivors, you know, that um, we have problems that are not going to go away just because the abuse stops. I agree. I agree. Weren't you afraid of passing down this terrible treatment to your own children? Christine? I would have been if I'd had children of my own when I was real young, and that's exactly why I didn't have children when I was in my 20s, um, because I was afraid of it, because my life was not uh, straightened out enough. Yes. Yeah. Although I think the story was really sad, I think it was wonderful that you came out with it, and a lot of people are going to help be helped because of that. Thank that's you very you much. Are. Yes. Yeah, hi. Um, I was wondering how you felt about the movie when it came out. I didn't write the movie, and uh, it didn't get terribly good reviews. I think it would have been fabulous if they'd stuck with Anne Bancroft, who was their original choice. I just want to know if Cheryl ever contemplated suicide when she was because of uh, your yes, bad Yes, I past. did. In fact, I attempted it and was almost successful. Fortunately, I wasn't. I'm awfully glad to be here. <laughs> so are we. <laughs> Christina, was yes. writing Mommy Dearest a type of revenge on your mother? No, it wasn't. Um, it was an attempt to uh, tell the truth about what was uh, true for me. I had been in the public eye basically all my life, and most of what had been written about me was sheer fantasy. <coughs> How much input did your mother, Cheryl, have into the content of your book? Uh, she helped me greatly in putting together dates and times and places, but it was my story. Is there anyone else besides you to corroborate about what your mother... To whom are you speaking? You're, you're still, yeah, you're a little upset, are you? Yeah. Is there anyone Tell else? Tell me why you're oh, upset. Well, she's, she's not that... here any longer to take her own part. Well, is the there anyone the else besides The most besides recent her? one, I believe, is Kirk Douglas in his uh, book that has just come out. June Allison, um, you know, Betty Davis, Helen Hayes, uh, almost everybody that was in Hollywood at the time, yes. Your mother... They have not gi been given equal time, maybe, but they definitely have I, I corroborated it. I asked my mother when your book came out, because Christina and I were in school together as children, and I asked mother, I said, did you know this was going on? And she said, yes, we all knew. And I said, why didn't you do something? She said, darling, in this town we rally behind each other. We protect each other. We do not admit to, to faults. Mm -hmm. No, you know, that wasn't exclusive to Hollywood. No. No, that's the way it was all over. Nobody no, talked about child abuse. To some, to some degree, that's the way it was yeah. when the book was originally published uh, ten years you, ago. Did you grow up with Liza and... Um, didn't one of you wanted to have Judy Garland? Oh, that was me. Yes, yeah. Liza you... and I were next door neighbors and we traded mothers uh, because we were at that age where the grass was greener on the, across the fence, you know. And we did trade mothers. It helped that mother and Judy were best friends. So they went along with it. Lana Turner and Judy Garland were best friends. Yes, yes. Now, when you say you traded, a childhood little game is a, how, I don't understand traded. Well, we decided that we each wanted the other mother mother to be our mother so we decided between us we're going to trade mothers and we informed our mothers we had traded I see. and judy was now my mother and uh -huh. my mother lana was now yeah. liza's mother liza loved your mother lana well, and you had, loved judy well of course they were total opposites my mother was a very glamorous woman still is judy was a very comfortable get down on the floor um, Bare feet, bare feet yeah. uh, ponytail, you know, so they were total opposites. 
Yeah. How your your recovery? What instantly? Whether was there any paralysis from your stroke? Yes, I was um, paralyzed on the right side. I couldn't speak. I couldn't walk. I had to learn to do everything. I couldn't read. It took about four years in a rehab hospital, and then with uh, a series of physical therapy and and um, uh, gym and that kind of thing. So it was a long time coming back, and. Uh, um, I think that it, it helped that I was an actress for 14 years because what I did was I, I treated it as though uh, it were speech role. therapy yeah. and, and that kind of thing. And I used my imagination to be able to visualize myself whole and well and, and healthy before I actually could, uh, could be that way. Survivor is the title of Christina Crawford's book. This is the story of her follow-up to the whole storm that was created by... Mommy Dearest, and I'm pleased to tell you, I'm in the book. <laughs> um, obviously, I have less enthusiasm for this book, which is, in which I do not appear. Uh, no, I am pleased to say that this is in paperback. This isn't funny. This is a very, in my opinion, honest uh, recounting of a tornadic childhood with a mother who loves her, and isn't this a good ending to this story? Lana Turner and her beloved daughter, Cheryl, are best of friends. California, the zip is 91356. Here's a very honest effort to uh, involve other people who've had similar circumstances. Maybe not uh, with uh, parents who are famous, but the pain is just as real. Incidentally, show them, show them, Joan. I just want to go down memory lane here. Here's a 1941, A Woman's Face is the title. Look at this screen presence here. Joan Crawford, as one of uh, Hollywood's most powerful and uh, sought-after women. And at home was uh, little daughter Christina, <clears throat> living quite another life indeed. We should also make this point that since Mommy Dearest, not a few celebrities' kids have come out of the woodwork, to name one, Gary Crosby. Mm -hmm. He called me many times, yeah. But you know, Phil, one point... it easier for all of us to take a look, an honest look at our own lives. I well, really I do. think the other part of it is that uh, the, the book that I, that I wrote, Mummy Dearest, um, and to some extent Survivor, because they're part of a continuum, uh, has to do with how people get through the circumstances yeah. that are uh, given yeah. to them at life. And I think everybody has problems. Everybody has something that, that hurts them. Yeah. Everybody has something that they need to, to overcome, to survive. But Christina had to write thank you notes to, for gifts, and then after she wrote the thank you notes, her mother gave the gifts to charity. Would you would you well, I did not thing? have I did not have the privilege uh, that a lot of people fantasize because uh, that was not part. I saw the privilege, but I didn't participate in it. It was it was made quite clear that it wasn't mine, but I did see it. That's Almost that's true. Out of time, Cheryl, I like to ask you a question. How did your mother feel when you came out of the closet? Well, With the knife. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, out of the oh. oh. I'm sorry. That wasn't. I wasn't going for a laugh. You did not come out of the closet on that horrible night in which Donnie Stampanato was killed. You came into the room. Uh, yes, I. She I wants think to know about your lesbian uh, relationship. Right. I. I first told my mother when I was about 13 years old, and I said, "Oh, mother, I'm in love." And he said, "She said to me, how cute. What's his name?" I said, "It's not a he. It's a she." And instead of her going, "Oh my God," you know, which a lot of parents would do, she said, "Oh, darling, don't worry about that. She'll outgrow it." <laughs> and I didn't. So in my family, I guess with all the other traumas going on, it was a very minor detail. Christine, did you always understand why your mother did the things she no, did? No, I didn't uh, always understand, but that has been part of the, the growing up process that I've had to go through. Yeah. How were you treated by schoolmates and friends as you were growing up? Me? I, I was treated quite well because we formed almost like a fraternity uh, commiserating with one another because we were the only people that we had to talk to that understood. Yeah. When Mommy Dearest came out, how did your brother react to the book? My brother and I have always been very close and he was extremely supportive. Yes, ma'am. Christina, have you forgiven your mother? I've forgiven myself for whatever mistakes I made as a child and have some compassion for both of us now. Of her own... Uh... Life growing up with uh, the most beautiful girl, woman in Hollywood, the most sought after, the sexiest, and all those other things that Miss Turner herself uh, rather distanced herself from when she was on our own program. Survival is uh, Christina Crawford's life since uh, Mommy Dearest. A very 
uh, compelling tale of her own struggle with a life-threatening illness from which she has now distanced herself, we're pleased to say. Whose hand did I see here? Yes.